When you work in the wine business, there are certain wines that are just burned into your memory. You want to keep the taste, the flavors locked away. And for me, that wine is Sasakaya. Not because it's my favorite wine of all time, but because it's one of the benchmarks. It's an iconic wine, something a lot of others are compared to. Sasakaya was one of the original Super Tuscans, wines that were originally named Vino de Tavola because they didn't qualify for the Appalachian laws. Those wines started selling for higher prices than wines under Appalachian laws, forcing Italy to rearrange its Appalachian system. So it's an iconic wine not only because of its quality, because of its history and what it did for Italian wines. The first vintage of Sasakaya was 1968. It's produced from this area on the Tuscan coast where back then Bordeaux varieties were not permitted. The owner wanted to create a great wine in the style of Bordeaux he'd tried. Sasakaya literally means the land of stones. People really know the wine is just Sasakaya but the property is named Tenuta Sangu it's a wine that I've had quite a bit and the reason that I've really burned it into my memory is because I've been tricked in a lot of blind tastings that really pushed me to really remember what the wine tastes like. The only thing that's not cool about Sasakaya is the price right now it's running in at about 250 bucks. A couple of years ago I tasted another wine right next to Sasakaya that I felt was of similar quality of similar flavors and actually a couple months ago I visited the property for the first time and tasting through several vintages I realized Yes, my hunch was correct. I'm not the only one that believes that. When I first tasted the wine, I remember looking it up on the internet and your favorite critic, James Suckling, said when the first vintage was released that this Bordeaux blend from Bulgari is a challenger to Sasakaya and Ornalaya. In addition to that, this wine comes in around 65 bucks. That's like 25% of the price of Sasakaya. This wine is also a Bordeaux blend. It's also made in Bulgari, where Sasakaya is from. I am super enthusiastic about the wine. Wine. I was trying to think about how to do this video and how I could really show that this wine is of high quality without having a true Sasakaya here. I would love to blind taste this wine against Sasakaya, but at this point I can't get any samples of Sasakaya. I don't have any in the cellar, unfortunately. However, I am going to blind taste this wine against another wine from a similar area made from Bordeaux varieties as well. Similar price point. I've never tasted this other wine, so it's going to be fun to compare. Okay, let's taste some wines. And we're back tasting out of my Gabriel glass standard editions. Love these glasses, universal glasses, although they are in the Bordeaux shape. So I think it's very appropriate that we're tasting these wines with them. I have a link in the description box. Check them out. Helps the channel if you purchase with that link. So thank you. Like always, I Coravin these and had somebody mix them up for me. Treat myself today. These are some lovely wines. Let's start out with the one on my left, your right. Already it's off to a good start. A lot of black cherry, cassis, crushed rocks, gravel, even a little bit of violets, mocha. Sasakaya to me also has a touch of all of the acidity, which this one has. This might be the one that I thought of. It smells rich, it smells dense. Sometimes when people smell big wines for the first time, they smell like, whoa, that's strong. That's kind of the sense that you get here. Dark, inky black. It smells nice, let's give this a taste here. Mm -hmm. Rich, round, complex. Tuscan Bordeaux blends have just this spine of acidity that I really like. They they actually have a signature. You know, a lot of purists say Bordeaux varieties should not be planted in Italy. Italy has so many unique indigenous grapes that should stick to their own. I disagree. I think Cabernet, I think Merlot, I think Cabernet Franc is completely different in Tuscany or in a lot of places in Italy. So if the rest of the world can plant those grape varieties, why can't Italy? Let's move on to the one on my right, your left. Wine two. Wine two is not as generous. It's a little tighter than this one, wine one. This to me smells Tuscan. Wine two here, it smells to me like Bordeaux. It's a little bit more reserved, a little more shocked. I could probably tell blind that this is a Tuscan wine. You still get the black cherry, black raspberry. It's not popping maybe as much as this one. It would be funny if the one that I thought was Sasakaya like, it doesn't turn out to be it when, it when it's revealed. Yeah, it's just a little bit, right? You know, Tuscan Bordeaux blends have that little flair that number one has that still smells really good in fact. More Bordeaux Bordeaux, the one here on the right. Number two is still an excellent wine. It's just a little bit more subdued, a little bit more held in. It's a little shyer. Actually, it, it, it's quite nice to be honest. The tannins are pretty suave. Let's go back to wine one here. Wine one's good. <laughs> wow, when I tasted the wine two, wine two is starting to get good too. Yeah, I think just, this has a little bit more punch. You ready for the reveal? Let's get it. We have two pretty darn excellent wines here. I mean, wine one, 
I have it 96 plus. This one right here on the right, I have it 93 points. Let's start with wine two here. This was still very good. More Bordeaux Bordeaux-y, whereas <laughs> is this one I really felt was like Sesakaya-esque. But here's the power of wine tasting. Let's see, I'm actually a little bit nervous because you know, with the thumbnail, with everything, talking it up, I'm kind of nervous here. Let's take a look. No, I'm right. <laughs> this is the Bulicella. This is the Coldi Pietrarossi 2018, a blend of Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot, Petit Verdot. This runs in at 65 bucks. Very cool story, great labels. This estate was actually founded by a Japanese that traveled through Italy, married an Italian woman, eventually settled down. This is from the Suvereto DOCG, which is right next to Bulgari. I mean, it's neighboring. You can have Bordeaux grapes and you can have Sangiovese. I think this is an excellent wine. 65 bucks, although I've seen it sometimes on sale for 40, so I think that's a good buy. This is it. Still tastes to me Sasakaya-esque. I have it 96 plus. You ready for the reveal? This is the Tenuta Orma Orma. 2020, 65 bucks. A blend of 50% Merlot with the rest Cabernet Sauvignon and Cabernet Franc. It's labeled as a Toscana IGT, although the grapes are from Bulgari, they just vinify them in an other cellar. Tenuta Orma is owned by the same family that owns Tenuta Seti Ponti. Tenuta Seti Ponti is famous for wines Crignolo, which is Cabernet Sauvignon Sangiovese, and then Orleno, which is a Cabernet Sauvignon from Tuscany, also an outstanding wine. I was just at the estate a few months ago. In in addition to these two properties, they own another one in Bulgari, they own some in Sicily. We went through all of their wines, we even tasted some special edition wines from Orma. However, I thought the flagship was the best wine. It was my favorite wine out of the bunch. And I do still think that the taste Sasakaya-esque. So tell me, do you like the wine Sasakaya? Do you have any cheaper alternatives? I'd love to know in the comments below. It'd help out a lot of other people too. I really like the community that's starting to build up on this channel. Thanks a lot, guys. I'll see you soon.